without bees, I don't think we can live without bees because you cannot live without food. But if we lose the bees, we will we'll not be able to produce enough food for the people. Honeybees now in danger of disappearing. Something has been causing honeybees to disappear since about 2006. Honeybees that help pollinate one third of U.S. crops that end up on our dinner tables. For the first time in U.S. history, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has added seven species of bees to the endangered species list. Nearly half of all colonies gone in the last year. This last winter, 33% of all the honeybee colonies in the U.S. died. That is double the acceptable natural amount. This is our life with bees. And this is our life without bees. It's essential that we preserve the bees because without bees, we're all going to starve to death. How extensive is this die-off? We need to get to the bottom of it and find out why and try to solve the problem. I'm from Mexico. I'm from Jalisco, Mexico. I grew up in a ranch in Jalisco. My father was a cattleman. I grew up, uh, I learned how to work in, in a ranch. But I always kept bees by my side. Well, in 2006, um, we lost our youngest daughter. My wife and I, we decided to do something different, looking for another place to live in order to go over that situation. And then I came to the United States and my uncle introduced me with uh, Gilbert Carranza. He was a beekeeper. He told me he wants to sell his business. A year after, I bought uh, 700 colonies from him and I started working with bees. Little by little, we start growing and we start uh, having more and more bees. Now we are running uh, 5,000, almost 5,000 colonies. There's no beekeepers in my family. I'm the first beekeeper, so I had to learn by my own. Getting a lot of bees. Well, the first time I, I uh, work with bees, I noticed the, how they work, how organized they are, and uh, the big job they do. They, they never stop working. They only live for work to collect honey. Looks like they only think about their, their own colony, their family. They work together. I like people, but I like bees. Los científicos miden los cuadros, los hexágonos, y siempre los hacen iguales. Todos son de lo mismo tamaño. No hay ninguno más grande que otro. ¿Cómo lo miden? ¿Has pensado en eso? ¿Cómo lo miden? Es increíble, ¿no? Bees are so organized. Like just to see the way their hives are set up. Um, just every, every single bee has a job, seeing what they're doing. They're just diligent about what they're doing. It's amazing to see how everybody just works right along, and it works. It works. Y básicamente, ellas viven para trabajar. Ellas no vienen a atacar a las personas. Ellas no viven para ir a, a, a buscar a quién va a atacar. Ellas lo único que están buscando es comida traen su comida para alimentar su cría, para alimentarse ellas mismas y llevan un ciclo de vida. Las abejas pueden vivir no más 40 días. Why are the bees so important? 90% uh, the plants are pollinated by bees. All the vegetables and fruits we eat, almost everything the animals eat, they require the bees. And 
certain time. I don't know a farmer that doesn't uh, thank the good Lord every day for bees and what they do for us. If the bees were done tomorrow, then uh, all the fruits and vegetables, they won't be able to give us fruit. The plant can grow, but they're not going to give us fruit because they are not pollinated. Natural bees are continuing to decline. Now, beekeeping has become more challenging, and the loss rates are sometimes hard to overcome. Bees suffer from a mite that gets in the hive. You have to treat for the mite very routinely, very aggressively. If you're not uh, treating for the mite, the mite will damage your colonies to the extent that uh, they're, they're not good enough for pollination and or dead. Uh, there's a bacteria that gets in the bee's digestive tract. That, that also has a treatment out there that you need to be uh, very on top of. Uh, and then thirdly, the bees need to have the availability of good forage, good food. Hay una pulga que se mete dentro de las colmenas, le llamamos barroa, y esas las que nos están matando muchísimas abejas. Esa pulguita se reproduce muy rápido, entonces está matando, está matando los enjambres porque se, come, se alimenta de la cría del, de las abejas. Esto es una pulga, mite. Llegó aquí a Estados Unidos en, 1900, en los noventas. A México llegó en los ochentas y se ha venido del sur hacia el norte. Para mí, en mi experiencia, es una de las cosas que, que ha hecho, que es la causante del colon y collapse disorder. Aunque yo no estoy seguro de eso, pero esa es mi teoría. Porque es cuando, yo tengo, cuando yo no tengo barroa en mis colmenas, cuando yo tengo las limpias de, de barroa, no se me mueren abejas, no se me mueren las colmenas. Cuando tengo mucha barroa, se me mueren muchas colmenas y se enferman mucho. Beekeeping is very important. 55 years ago, uh, we had 5.5 million colonies in the United States. Now, uh, I think there is less than 2.5 million colonies in the States. So there's a shortage of bees. Estamos preparando las abejas para mandarlas a Fresno. El proceso es bastante simple, pero es, muy, es de mucho trabajo. Las abejas pesan más o menos 100 libras cada una. En una, en una pallet podemos poner cuatro, palet, cuatro colmenas, son 400 libras. Si hiciéramos todo este trabajo a mano, sería bastante difícil. Usamos los forklifts para moverlas, las subimos al trailer y también ponemos una net para cubrirlas cuando las transportamos de un estado a otro. Tenemos que limpiar muy bien las colmenas, utilizamos un compresor industrial para soplar que no lleven nada de tierra ni que lleven ni ningún tipo de insectos ajenos a lo que son las abejas, porque en el cruce del estado con California nos requieren que vayan muy limpias. Las, las abejas las movemos de noche porque es cuando ellas regresan a la colmena. Durante el día están volando Entonces la mitad del enjambre usualmente está fuera de la caja. Si las moviéramos en el día, la mitad de las abejas se quedarían perdidas. Se, hacen un, se juntan todas en el nido y es cuando nosotros aprovechamos para moverlas. Al día siguiente van a, van a amanecer ellas en otro lugar completamente distinto y van a tener que volver a hacer su, un, un vuelo de reconocimiento y encontrarán otra vez su, su caja del lugar donde salieron 
van a volver ahí de nuevo. California has uh, about one million acre almond plantations. All the beekeepers, commercial beekeepers, take their hives to California in February and March for the pollination of almonds. Due to the demand. There's a million acres of uh, almond trees in the ground here in California now. Most of those acres require two to two and a half hives per acre. That adds up to a lot of beehives. Uh, California does not possess enough beehives to cover that demand, so hives are coming from all across the country. These uh, bees belong to Vicente Gonzalez. This almond variety requires cross-pollination, so the bees are here to transfer pollen from one variety of tree to the other variety of tree in order to make an almond. The bees climbing inside the flower here to get down in there and get nectar out, and as it's getting that nectar out, it's getting this pollen all over its body. And then as it flies from tree to tree, it disperses that uh, pollen to the other varieties. Nosotros las alimentamos, las dejamos las curamos, tratamos de que estén, estén bien para cuando ellas vengan aquí y tengan este paraíso de flores, pues lo aprovechen y, lo, y hagan el, lo que tienen que hacer, producir comida para nosotros. Just like human beings, if we're not eating good food, we're not going to be feeling good. Bees are the same way. If the bees are not in an area that they can fly and get good nectar, good pollen sources, then those two items have to be supplemented. El trabajo de esta abeja comienza aquí cuando la flor sale y termina cuando una almendra sale de este árbol. Los árboles dependen mucho de que, de que la abeja haga bien su trabajo para que el fruto venga. Si la abeja no se para en cada una de las flores, luego no tienes una almendra. Cada una de estas flores va a tener una almendra aquí. Básicamente nuestro trabajo es poner las, las abejas aquí en las huertas, ponerlas en el lugar que nos indica el ranchero cómo las quieren y esperar a que ellas hagan su, su trabajo. Bueno, ellas regresan aquí a la caja. Tú las vas a mirar muy activas aquí. Esto es lo que quiere ver el ranchero, que las cajas estén llenas de abejas. Entre más abejas tiene aquí, obviamente son más abejas las que están trabajando en los, en los árboles, ¿verdad? Ellas saben cuál es su trabajo. Lo hacen por naturaleza, no es algo que les dices ve y hazlo. No, ellas trabajan por instinto. Es bonito verlas trabajar. A veces puedes gastar una hora viendo cómo se paran en una flor. Por ejemplo, esta, esta abeja aquí que está recolectando el polen. They say that almond guys need beekeepers just about as bad as beekeepers need, need almond guys. And it's, it's true. So if anybody wants a reason why we need to take care of the bees, you eat that fruit, that little bee, that little pollinator played a major role in making that happen. We formed a committee that works with the beekeepers, the pesticide folks, the farmers, on how they can communicate together, work together to keep the pollinators healthy.
part of the responsibilities that farmers have today is not only feeding the American public, but feeding people all over the world. There are people starving to death all over the world that need food that we can grow. An essential element of growing those fruits and vegetables require bees. They are the essential building blocks in growing food. They tell us that we're going to have close to 10 billion people in the world by 2050. The American farmer is going to have to double their production in order to meet the needs of this growing population. There is a moral imperative for America to preserve farmland and protect farmland. And part of that moral imperative is to make sure we don't do anything that kills off the bees that make it possible, besides that syrup that we put on our pancakes and waffles in the morning, that they pollinate our fruits, our vegetables, so we don't starve to death. <laughs> Today, 95% of the people in this country don't touch dirt. They've forgotten where their food comes from. So it's the last thing on their mind. So they don't worry about the bees. And it's because they don't see it impacting them personally. If we were to have some sort of food catastrophe in this country, where the budget of the American family went from 10% to 25% spent on food, that 15% increase, that would get everybody's attention. I want you to think about that for a second. If, you're, if you had to cut out 15% of your budget right now, which you might be spending on a new car or couches or TVs or vacations, and had to put that towards food, all of a sudden you'd become really interested about food, where it comes from. It's a blessing and a curse. American public doesn't have to worry about the, the abundance of food, but at the same time, the curse is they don't think about the bee. The universities play a huge role in agriculture. The research that has gone on in our universities is what has made agriculture so effective today. This is a natural hive. They build combs like this. Sometimes you may see swarms on the trees. I've been here since 2004, working for ASU and maintaining the colonies at the Honeybee Research Lab. We have about 100 bee colonies and we have so many ongoing research projects. It's been busy. As you see, we have two big buildings and then laboratories. We have the best established bee research laboratory. We develop in vitro rearing techniques. We can raise bees in the incubators instead of in the hives, and we can control the environment, we can control nutrition, we can con control almost everything, and we can look at the effects of those things on the development of the bees. Africanization is the biggest threat in uh, southern states. European bees are very docile, very gentle. As long as you don't step on them or you smash them, they don't tend to sting. Beekeepers have uh, different problems. They have uh, varroa problems. They have uh, colony collapse disorder due to different factors, uh, pesticide, malnutrition, or uh, stressors in the environment. Arizona is saturated with the Africanized uh, colonies, feral colonies. Those colonies are everywhere. In honeybees, there is only one queen bee in the hive. And uh, she develops in 16 days and becomes uh, adult. After 10 days, she takes a mating flight. She mates in the open air while she is flying. And she mates with uh, 15, 20 drones. Since Arizona is saturated with the Africanized colonies, she will most likely mate with the Africanized drones and the colonies will become Africanized. It's necessary to inseminate the queen bees in the laboratory with the known stocks of drones in order to keep the stocks European and uh, gentle. Otherwise, all our colonies will become Africanized. Here is the queen. She was inseminated yesterday. She is number six. Africanized bees are not our friends. 
they come in and when they come into the regular colonies, they change the disposition of the bees from being very docile to very aggressive. And the Africanized bees have been known to chase people down and animals and sting them enough that they die. It's difficult to keep uh, European colonies in Arizona, as I said earlier. And we mark the queen bees on the thorax. So we know that our queens are original queens. They are docile uh, queens. And uh, beekeepers do not inspect the colonies uh, every 10 days or every two weeks. And then uh, bees uh, supersede the queens. And they kill the old queen, or if the old queen is died, they raise another queen. And that queen, new queen, can look like European queen but she will mate with the Africanized colonies and become Africanized. If people have docile European colonies, and they will not bother anybody, and we can increase the number of colonies. We want to encourage people to keep bees. It's a great hobby. Uh, if you love honey like I do, it's a great way to have your own honey. Cuando vendemos con la miel, la primera parte es sacar la Esta máquina saca la miel del bastido, de los bastidores de la caja y después las cadenas los empujan para que la navaja lo corte. Este es el extractor. Nosotros conectamos aquí esta máquina para cargar los bastidores. Después de que la miel comienza a fluir aquí en el extractor, Se comienza a salir de los bastidores y, de, y corre por una pipa que tenemos en la parte de abajo. Después del tanque lo, lo jala una bomba, la cual nos manda por, por una pipa de arriba a esta máquina. Esta máquina recibe la miel, toda la miel que hay aquí y está separando la cera de la miel. Después de que se está separando la miel, la cera cae, la, la cera cae a la parte de abajo ya seca. Esta es la parte que le estamos cortando a los bastidores allá. So, la miel ya sale prácticamente limpia para venir al tanque de, de sedimentación. Cuando hay un flujo de miel, una colmena fuerte te puede llenar una caja en una semana, que son como unas 25 libras. Esto es lo que es la producción de miel en nuestra empresa. Es muy importante. Nosotros producimos no solamente miel, sino con el trabajo que hacen nuestras abejas se producen muchos otros productos como vegetales, frutas, verduras, las cuales necesitan ser polinizadas. Así de que en resumen el trabajo de las abejas no solo es producir miel, sino que producimos trabajo y comida. Even the trees and all the plants that produce pollen during uh, spring, they need bees to collect all of that pollen. Otherwise, the pollen is going to stay in the flowers, and then the wind is going to pick the pollen up, and you're going to breed. Pollinators play a key role in keeping plants around homes healthy. And there's a dollar attachment to that, because landscaping increases the value of a home. So if people will think of that bee as their partner in keeping the value of their home up, they'll encourage bees to be around, encourage pollinators, keep those plants and shrubs and bushes healthy. Oh no, the bees don't bother us at all. It's kind of nice to see the action in the backyard. I personally have some health issues, uh, an autoimmune disease, and. Honey is one of the natural healers, so we looked at having our own hive in the backyard. We are going to have one colony, which is about three containers worth of bees. We're going to work them just at the farm down the road, and then once I have a better understanding and confidence level, we're going to bring them to our yard, hopefully, and then we'll work them from here. Some of the neighbors are afraid of them. You know, there's a lot of stories about Africanized bees and um, people think that that's in general how bees are. The majority of the bees aren't out to sting, they're out to collect, they're working and doing their job. So I think that that's the biggest thing that our neighbors need to 
just see that they're out to do their job. They aren't out to find people to sting them. The bee survival is becoming very, very important to our agriculture. So letting the bees survive and live and reproduce is very, very important to us as a whole, as humans. A lot of people in urban areas say, well, the Department of Agriculture, I mean, I'm not a farmer, I don't, you know, why do I care about the Department of Agriculture? The bottom line is the American public has to understand that their food is not grown in Safeway. That it's grown out there on somebody's farm somewhere and that little bee played an important role. Don't feel afraid because the bees are flying and on your uh, yards and your gardens. They are just looking for food. They are doing what they need to do. They are giving you a favor. So how can a regular person do for bees? Just let, let them do their job. Let the bees do their job. Leave the bees alone. <laughs>